got a very diverse uh, population in Oklahoma, and it's becoming more diverse as, as we grow, as we mature as a state. Uh, we started off uh, you know, with, with a very diverse uh, segment of the population, and then we saw it become really uh, radically white Caucasians. And we've seen that change. Uh, we've seen more people of color move back into Oklahoma, uh, whether it's African Americans, Hispanics, uh, Asian Americans. We, we're seeing more and more of an influx of everybody because we're becoming more metropolitan as a state. Uh, clearly, the South Side, I grew up in Dell City. Uh, so I grew up in the South Side of Oklahoma City. And, and a lot of people may consider this is uh, where everybody lives, but that's not the case. We've got a broad section uh, living across the state of Oklahoma uh, from all races. I think politicians are slow. Uh, politicians are slow to learn, slow to react. Um, and I think that's one of the things that's regrettable about uh, the nature of politics is that they listen to the same groups that they have been listening to. And so as newer groups arrive and as newer groups uh, start to speak out, uh, there's a slow slowness to recognize the importance and the need. Uh, but clearly the Hispanic community in Oklahoma City and the Oklahoma City metro area in the 5th Congressional District is of prime importance. We see a lot of hard work a lot of people who are passionate about making sure their kids have a great education, uh, that have solid core family values that uh, they have in common with the vast majority of others in this area. That's why they choose to live here, uh, is because it's such a great area that has people of like mind with them. Right. I think Washington, uh, you, James Langford has been our congressman now for four years, and now that he's running for the U.S. Senate, it's leaving his seat open, and we need to make sure that we have a strong, proven voice that fights for our conservative values, uh, values such as uh, you know, making sure that we're uh, not taxing people that are out working hard, that are trying to earn a living, making sure that we're encouraging people to locate their businesses in the United States, locate uh, their labor here uh, in the United States, be able to provide an education system that's quality uh, from the state level. Uh, there's lots of things that Washington is not getting right. Uh, right now, whether it's, you know, immigration is one that Washington has wholly failed to have a comprehensive immigration policy. And it's something that regardless of what the answers are, uh, they're not even willing to have a discussion about it. And it's time that we start seeing movement in Washington instead of just the same old uh, lack of action. Clearly, we've got to have something that addresses immigration on a comprehensive national level. Uh, Washington's failure to act nationally has resulted in m numerous states, Oklahoma being one of them, uh, taking up immigration reform and trying to do it on their own. Uh, the states do not have the ability to secure our borders, uh, both on the north as well as on the south and then on our coasts as well. Uh, that's only something that the federal government is able to do. Yet the federal government has tried to avoid this issue for far too long. Uh, we have to have a conversation in Washington about making sure that immigration is achieved with a, uh, with a comprehensive reform that starts with securing our borders and, and provides a legal uh, means for people to be able to easily get into the country if they have the means to support themselves through hard work. And we've seen a failure from Washington for far too long on even being willing to have the discussion or the conversation about it. Regrettably, I think you're always going to have people that are going to have uh, ill motives. Now, whether those people are successful in getting elected to the House and the Senate in Oklahoma uh, is one thing, but clearly the, the result, House Bill 1804 was a result of frustration by a lot of people that Washington wasn't taking care of the problem. Uh, there were a lot of people that are in favor of legal immigration and want to provide legal uh, status to people. There were people who were in favor of the bill that were there. Uh, you had people that were opposed to the bill uh, because they didn't want to see anything dealing with it. Uh, Obviously, that was years and years ago that 1804 was, was passed in, in, exactly. on, in Oklahoma. And what we have to look at today is we haven't seen really any, any movement to try to, to replicate that or enhance it. Uh, what we do see is we do see people in Washington that are not addressing the issue. And that's what's causing states like Oklahoma several years ago, Arizona more recently, uh, to try to fix the problem on their own. It's because Washington is failing to address it. I think the 
one of the reasons why I think a lot of people from the Hispanic community live in Oklahoma is because our values are very similar. Uh, we're, we're all believe very fundamentally in a Judeo-Christian value set. Uh, we, we support traditional marriage. We uh, support uh, the right to, uh, of, of, to life. We oppose abortion uh, greatly in this state. Uh, we have a value of hard work, that uh, we should have our confidence and our faith in, uh, in work and not in, in government to try to solve our problems. And then, and then lastly, I think the thing that really we see a, a huge complement uh, between the people who have been here traditionally and the people who are moving here, uh, whether they be of Hispanic origin or other, other uh, background, we have faith in an almighty creator and not in a big government to take care of our needs. Uh, people go and they pray to, at church to, to their Lord for help instead of you know, just waiting for government to try to sweep in and hand out the answer. And uh, I think those, those value sets are what we have in common in Oklahoma. And that's why I think it's, it's uh, a, there's clearly a path to unity in uh, the way we work together and support each other uh, to make sure that everybody has a better economic prosperity in Oklahoma. The, I think the one thing that would separate me from the, the PAC and the Republican primary is that all of us but one candidate have served in elective office. Uh, all of us have a track record. Uh, but I have a proven track record of fighting for the values that Oklahomans hold dear. Uh, the values of hard work, uh, the values of limited government, uh, getting government out of the way so people can succeed without owner's regulations and, uh, and faith in an almighty creator instead of a big government to try to solve our problems. Uh, I've got a proven track record over the last 10 years serving in the state Senate, uh, representing Oklahoma County, Oklahoma City, uh, Edmond, Jones, Luther, Arcadia, uh, South Guthrie. I've represented all those areas uh, over the last 10 years. I've got a proven track record of making sure that Oklahoma is moving in the right direction. We contrast that with what we see in Washington, D.C. We're not seeing the same type of actions coming out of Washington. Uh, I could either sit around and I could gripe about the problem or I could try to do something about it. And so I'm trying to do something about it so my children and their grandchildren uh, can live in the land of the free and the home of the brave with economic prosperity. Thank you, thank you for your time. Uh, gracias para su tiempo. And uh, I appreciate you considering me and I hope that uh, I would be willing and worthy of your support on June 24th in the Republican primary. Gracias para su tiempo.